lights in here. Okay, so this is the tour. What do we got here? Okay, this is a transmission electron microscope. It's not running right now, which is why it's very quiet. Because <laughs> it runs on high vacuum systems and there's a water chiller in the whole nine yards. So it's, it's about the same noise level as, as the SEM. The difference in this scope, though, is you can see it's obviously much bigger. Right. And the maximum accelerating voltage on this microscope is 120,000 volts. Okay, whereas that one was more like 10 to... The maximum on that one is 30. 30, okay. For biological stuff, we usually run around 10. So what do you, can you look at metals and stuff on this? Well, you can look at thin film metals with this, but the main thing that I use this microscope for is instead of looking at the surface of something, I'm actually going to be cutting thin slices and looking through it. Got it. So this is, this is the difference in, say, using uh, a light microscope like the Olympus BH2 mm -hmm. to look through a sample. Mm -hmm. so, uh, say, if you're doing histology, you've, you've embedded your tissue in, in paraffin, you've sliced three micron pieces, you've put it on a slide, and you look at it. With this microscope... Wait, what, histology? Yeah, histology, like, like in... Uh, the study of... In the study of tissues. Gotcha. Okay. You know, histology is is um, like in a hospital if they take a biopsy of something they're going to Im usually embed it in in uh, a wax material. Gotcha. They're going to cut thin sections of it. They're going to stick it to a slide. They're going to stain it, and they're going to look at it in the microscope looking for specific structures. Okay. Okay. Now, with this microscope, we're going to embed in a hard plastic, and our sections are going to be about 70 nanometers thick. Wow. So they're much, much thinner. How can you manipulate something that thin? Uh, with, with amazing <laughs> skill and dexterity. <laughs> wow. Now they, they go on to, uh, this, these are some, what's called a slot grid. Mm -hmm. And there are half a dozen sections on each one of those grids. Wow. And they're all in order. So I can track a structure from number one all the way through number 17. Wow, okay. So that's that's a structure that's been sectioned. It's been sectioned okay. using what's called an ultra microtome. Okay. And we use this microscope for doing that kind of work. I mean, this this is. In a, a microtome, I'm sorry to back up. I'm I'm kind of slow, but microtome is basically like using the slice part of the cheese grater. You just take a yep. small razor section. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's this called? This is called an ultra microtome. And a microtome basically slices, slices sample. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the objective here is to be able to accurately and reproducibly cut sections at approximately 80 nanometers thickness. So is there a blade? The yeah, the, the blade's not in there. We use a diamond knife. A diamond knife? Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So I keep the diamond knife locked up in the cabinet when it's not in use. Because it's valuable? It's about three grand. Oh, I see, I see. Is there like a, a big market in amongst biologists where people giving diamond rings to their I've wives? Never, <laughs> I've never, never heard of anybody stealing one, but I've, I have seen people take them out who don't quite understand what they're doing and break them. Oh goodness! Yeah. And you know. Can we see one? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Diamond knives. Diamond knives. Diamond knives. Lasers. Glowing worms. This is a. Your job's kind of boring, man. I know. The things we do. Okay, let me turn some power on here. Get some lights. What time did you want to eat lunch, by the way? You getting hungry? Yeah, I'm getting good hungry, so. Yeah. Maybe we can come back and sample after lunch? Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is a three millimeter wide, gem quality diamond. Where's the blade? Where's the diamond at? The diamond is that flat. You see that thin, flat line right across there? Let's see. Oh, so the sample goes down. Yeah, let me move this up a little bit. I need to get a tripod. I'll be right back. Okay, so how does it work? The sample is in that plastic block. Right. And it passes the knife. Yeah. Retracts, comes up above, moves forward 70 nanometers, and comes back down to so slice off a section. How do you get the sample onto a slide? Uh, use water. Water? Okay, I'll show you.
Did you just slice it? No. Nope. I'm not close enough to slice yet. What you gotta do is get this back. Yeah, unfortunately you can't really see. You want you look through the eyepieces, you'll see there's kind of a flat gray meniscus uh -huh. at the edge of the knife. I'll do that in a second. Okay, as the sections come off, they come off that knife edge, you can tell how thick they are by what color they are. Really? Yeah, and you want them to be very pale gold, sort of between gold and silver when they come off. All and right. then you're going to take your grid in a, in a pair of fine forceps and reach down, go underneath your sections that are floating on top of the water, and then come up underneath them and pick them up. Wow. Burrito place or Waffle House? This sounds yeah. like my kind of place, man. So, okay, I can actually see. You can see that? Yes, I can see what's good. Okay, let's do this. All right, so we're gonna look. Okay, I can actually see it. So the sample okay, gets I've got it cut set. by the knife. I've got it set back so that it's not actually cutting. So that's a diamond blade that that's I'm looking at. a diamond blade in there. Can you move the sample up and down? Oh, wow. And uh, you can also index the sample back and forth. So if you wanted to cut it, you'd bring it towards you, right? Yes. And what's what's on that sample? Is that paraffin or? That's plastic. That's an epoxy resin. Gotcha. So it's really really hard. And that so the slice that we get there, we collect it and we put it on these things here, right? The grids, yeah. The nickel grid, and then we put that in the transmission electron microscope. Right. This is a, a study from uh, one of our faculty members who's working on drug discovery in cancer biology. That's cool. Uh, Another big use for this microscope is looking at viruses. Um, what have, they look like? Yep. Really? We learn a lot about them by where they reproduce in a cell, how they get in, how they get back out, and, and what their shapes are. We can identify them many times uh, just on the, the shape of the virus itself. How do you not blow them apart, though? They're, well, usually they're either embedded in plastic. If they're in a tissue, they're embedded in a plastic. Gotcha. If, uh, if they're in a, a liquid situation, we'll, we'll fix them and kill them, and then we'll put them on a grid and do what's called a negative stain process. Gotcha. So we can see the shape of the virus, and we can tell a herpes virus from a pox virus from uh, you know, bacula virus or something like that. We can tell a lot about what a virus is by the shape of it. That's pretty cool. I mean, if the, the first diagnostic line for suspected smallpox is a negative stain of tissue fluid from a lesion because nothing in the world looks like pox virus. So you can. What does it look it. like? It's kind of brick shaped. Okay. And you can, and it's big, they're about 300 nanometers. You can take a sample of lesion fluid, do a negative stain, have it in the transmission electron microscope in a few minutes, and know whether that lesion is from shingles or uh, cutaneous herpes or something more serious. Wow. So so that's, it's fast. It doesn't tell you which virus it is, but it tells you the family of viruses. I have to say that a sample of lesion fluid sounds like the nastiest thing I've ever heard of. It's, it's, not, nice. <laughs> it's not nice. And so where does the sample go? In here? Yeah, the sample fits through here. Okay. So that's your aperture. And yeah, so it goes in there. You don't have to do it. If I, you, can, unless... I can show you where. Ooh, that's a pretty fancy way to take things in and out. Yes, that's an airlock right there because we never vent this column. Gotcha. So it just goes right there in the tip? Yep. It fits behind that little copper plate. Wow. I'm going to get in closer. Wow. Okay. Man. And so it has to index in there mechanically in a yep. very accurate fashion. When you go to put them in here. Is that a ruby tip on the end? Yes, that's a ruby. It looks like uh, something I've seen in... It's, it's something called metrology, coordinate measuring machines. Yeah, it's... it's. What's the intent of the ruby? It's a very hard material. And so you index on the ruby every yeah, time? There's a, there's a fitting inside the microscope that that ruby fits into so that you're, you know that these two holes are exactly where they're supposed to be. It's a mechanical index that's a gem. That's a pretty interesting. I've mm -hmm. never seen that. And you see the little recesses right here? Yeah. The grids fit down in those. Right. There's a little rim right here on the inside of this hole that fits down on top of it. So oh. when you put your grids in there, the boss, 
put that down, they're held in place. So level with me, how many times have you bent that? Uh, <laughs> actually, I haven't bent it, but well, one of our postdocs kind of rolled it up one time. Did you get rid of him? <laughs> no, no, he's a good guy. He just, he just had a... <laughs> Small mishap. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I took it home and I fixed it, and, and, and it's okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but you can see it's a little, it's not quite as smooth on the surface as it really ought to be. That's pretty interesting. Very interesting. So you would put the sample on there, and then you'd come insert the sample. You put the sample back in here, and if the scope was running. Do you feel like a pretty hardcore scientist whenever you're putting the sample in there? That's, oh, yeah. That's a pretty cool moment, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you, look you, at me with my, my you, science. Yeah, you put it in here, you would rotate it. You'd pump the air out of this section right here where there's an airlock, and then you would rotate it again and slide it into where it fits under the beam. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So you always maintain vacuum in here. I just figured out what I'm going to do with this video. So you know I've got my little entertainment. I, I just figured out what I'm doing with this video. So I bought a Olympus BH2 microscope, and you did too, right? Yeah. But you're like a professional microscopist. Microscopist. How do you microscopist. say Microscopist. Whatever that, <laughs> so you're gonna. I'm gonna explain the different types of microscopes at some point. So that was a scanning electron microscope in there. This is a transmission electron microscope. Yep. So it doesn't scan. It doesn't scan. So how does it generate the image then? Well, you're gonna drive your your beam through your specimen. That's okay. The thing about using the higher energy. Okay. The higher energy gives you shorter wavelength, which gives you higher resolution. So it's kind of like a, an x-ray? Your, your film, so to speak, is behind the sample? Am I saying that? Am uh, I thinking correctly? Well, this, the camera's right here. Okay. The sample's up here. And the viewing screen is down here, so you can look at your sample in here. This is a lot fancier feeling. It might not be, but it sure feels fancier. It's very different. Um, this, is, you know, this is a lot like working with a light microscope. You're going to look at different parts of your sample by moving that sample around. And with this microscope, we, we move everything to the trackball. The trackball is set up to stepper motors up here in the stage that are going to move that sample back and forth. The beam stays in the same place. Right. So we can move around and. Looks like you have a mechanical override here. If something goes at, wrong. This is for tilting the stage. Oh, gotcha. I can loosen this and then tilt the stage over. I see. Uh, sometimes if you're doing what's called tomography, what you want to do is take a picture and tilt, take another picture and tilt, and do a series, a tilt series like that, and then in an image processor, put them back together, and it'll give you a three-dimensional structure. Gotcha. Yep. It's amazing how so many sciences cross. I mean, like in engineering, we do things like this all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's pretty awesome. 